Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Friday, September 24th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We're still in the peak time of the Atlantic hurricane season. We have a couple of systems to watch today. I'll just briefly mention that up to the northeast of Bermuda, there's a subtropical type low pressure system beneath an upper level low that has some kind of low to medium chance to develop into a subtropical or tropical depression as it moves northwest. But the time window for that is fairly short. Eventually, westerly wind shear will pick up within a day or two, and this is likely to stay offshore and weak as it turns to the northwest and the northeast over the next couple of days. The main storm we're watching is Hurricane Sam out here in the central Atlantic. This is a developing storm that is likely to continue intensifying as it has over the last couple of days as it moves slowly westward in the general direction of the Leeward Islands, eventually turning northwestward within a few days. This is a slower moving hurricane than average for this location in the Atlantic, so it will take a full five days to get from here to here. That's a long time, and we'll be watching this one for a while. Here's the close-up visible loop of Sam this morning, and the storm has intensified since yesterday. You can see a tight wrapping around this low-level center here. There is no eye currently visible, but you can start to see a dimple at the end of this loop right in the center. It might be a little bit hard to see on the screen recording due to the compression, but we do have tightly wrapped bands coming into the center at the end of the loop here, and you can see the distinct shape of a hurricane there. Now, Sam hasn't been explosively intensifying to this point because it has been embedded in a moderately dry air mass, and this has been causing some deformities in the convective structure. If we look in the latest microwave pass from about, uh, let's see, about 11 a.m. Eastern time here, we'll see that Sam was centered somewhere in here, and there was a gap in the convection on the west side, and we didn't really see a complete ring of thunderstorms around the center, indicating that the eyewall has not yet really formed, and we can see that on the conventional satellite loop that we just looked at as well with no eye really visible. So for the moment, this is just a category one hurricane winds of about 75 miles per hour. But if you look at the wind field on the ASCAT pass from a little earlier in the morning, about 8 a.m. Eastern time, we'll see that there's a very compact wind field with a well-defined maximum and wind speed here in pink near the center. And this compact size that decays outward quickly like this with slower wind as you get out to, to larger radii. This is a compact structure that indicates that eventually the pocket near the center of the storm will moisten up due to all this wind picking moisture up off the ocean, and we're, we're likely to see an inner core structure and eye develop and quick intensification to occur during the next few days, and Sam is expected to become a strong hurricane. Wind shear is expected to stay low, and besides the moderate dry air around it, water is warm and conditions are favorable here in the peak of the hurricane season. This is the water vapor satellite loop showing Sam here. You'll see that the cirrus is expanding outward in all directions to the north, the northeast, the northwest, and the southwest here. So healthy looking outflow. That's also an indication that vertical wind shear is low. All signs that the environment favors intensification. Again, in the background here, there is some darker gray kind of off to the west, and some of that is underneath Sam as well. And again, that is the one limiting factor at the moment, but the storm structure is such that that likely will not prevent strengthening. Now, this is going to continue generally off toward the west-northwest, and you can kind of see the steering features in this very loop. This body of dry air and dark gray also simultaneously outlines the subtropical ridge in the middle levels, so we do have a ridge of high pressure to the north of the storm. It is fairly weak, and so the storm is moving more slowly than normal here, and this flow toward the, toward the west is quite light, and so the hurricane is expected to gradually make a turn toward the west-northwest and northwest as it approaches the Lesser Antilles as this ridge is expected to weaken a little bit. I'm going to show you what this looks like on the model forecasting here. This is the GFS 6C run, and the 12Z run will be out by the time this video is published, but I'm going to use this one for an illustration. And we'll see that there's Sam here. This is at the current time. And that ridge I just showed you on water vapor imagery is outlined in here. You'll see the wind barbs doing a little bit of a clockwise motion. So we have this general weak ridge kind of directing the storm toward the west here. Now this ridge again is, is not very strong. And as we go forward, we'll see that the storm starts moving slowly off to the west-northwest here, gaining a little bit of latitude. Now, it gets a little bit hard to discern just from the 500 millibar level. Remember, the atmosphere is 3D. I'm only showing you one 2D slice of it here. And you'll see that the ridge 
ends up oriented to the northwest of the storm like this. So we'll have a weak ridge here and you might say, wow, isn't that going to direct the storm toward the west or west southwest toward the Lesser Antilles? Well, not necessarily. Uh, the hidden feature here is that there's another part of the subtropical ridge that extends off of Africa. So I'll actually draw this for you here. There's a tongue of ridging that kind of extends like this. There's a ridge anchored over Africa and there's a ridge uh, that does this. Sorry, I got the direction wrong there, but it kind of loops around. And so there's a competing flow out of the southwest to counteract the northeast flow on this side of the ridge to the northwest of the storm. And I can prove that to you by looking at the overall steering flow. If I take a sounding around the vortex, I'll be able to show you that at that 500 millibar level, which is here, if you look at the column of winds here in the vertical profile, they're all out of the south just lightly, very light flow, light steering flow that's actually toward the north. And so this is trying to nudge the storm, in fact, more toward the northwest in this forecast, despite the ridge being to the northwest of the storm at this point and at this vertical level. So on the GFS, we see the storm start to gain latitude, and now the influence of a large trough near the eastern seaboard starts to, to come into play, where we start digging you know, westerly wind all the way down to the Turks and Caicos and Hispaniola, very deeply digging trough. And this kind of sets the edge. The subtropical ridge in general is trying to set up in here. And the edge of this ridge is right there. So the storm is going to try to turn toward the north in this kind of a steering pattern. And on the GFS, you'll see that happen. This trough digs and amplifies. And the steering flow at this point is very solidly toward the north and uncomfortably close to Bermuda in this particular model forecast. And I'll show you just in the, in, the, in the European model as an example, this is kind of a similar pattern where we have the ridge setting up by six days out over the Northeast Atlantic. And there's Sam a little bit closer to the islands than on the GFS, but the same trough is digging in here, which would easily turn the storm toward the north in this forecast. And you'll see that it does move a little bit farther west of the GFS, but ends up turning toward the north in the European model as well. So I'm going to dwell on this uh, close passage to the islands for just a little bit and note that in our current model guidance there is a little bit of a split here and we'll see that the GFS ensemble which has 31 different members kind of simulating different outcomes in general has a corridor of solutions that is well to the northeast of the Leeward Islands comfortably missing in the vast majority of members. However, if we look at the European ensemble, there's a corridor of members that is a little bit closer to the Leeward Islands, many of them actually impacting the islands within five or six days. And this has been a common theme for the last few days where the European ensemble has been a little bit farther southwest than the GFS. Now it's worth mentioning here that this is actually a common bias of the European model these days where it actually thinks the storm is a little bit weaker than it actually is. In this plot here, it takes about three days for the ensemble to recognize that SAM is a hurricane, but it already is one. So the model thinks SAM is weaker than it actually is may result in a slightly more southerly track here. And for that reason, it's possible that this, this model is a little bit too close to the islands and reality will likely be closer to what this shows. And generally taking the average of these two models uh, is the best forecast in most situations. And that's what the National Hurricane Center forecast is showing, which brings this close to the islands, but still missing toward the northeast. Now I do want to reemphasize that this is a slow moving storm. So this is five days from now. And the average error from an NHC forecast is over 200 miles at this time. And you can see that the cone is wide here. So there is a possibility that this shifts farther south and gets close to the islands. That's not something we can guarantee won't happen yet. So interest there should definitely be monitoring the situation as we go forward. But right now there are some encouraging signs that the storm could miss the islands to the north given the weak steering ridge to its north. Now that's the next five or six days or so. I do want to spend just a little bit of time mentioning what could happen after that. The steering pattern gets a little more chaotic as we get beyond day six. I noted that this trough is digging in off the eastern seaboard, but you'll see that there's a very strongly amplifying ridge over Michigan, somewhere around here. And so this highly amplified wave pattern could lead to some crazy looking outcomes in the steering flow. On the GFS, we see that it is now seeing a cutoff load develop off of North Carolina with a bridge of ridging to the north of that cutoff low and the hurricane is coming in here on the east side of that low. 
Now in this particular forecast, what ends up happening is the storm moves over Bermuda, there's the upper low to its west, and then the storm is able to escape out around the ridge to the east of that upper level low, and we see a recurve uh, over the ocean after passing Bermuda. Now in general, this kind of pattern where we have a trough cutting off off the eastern seaboard like this, most outcomes will end up in a recurve to the east of North America in the vast majority of scenarios. It is worth noting though that this pattern is rather chaotic and has varied a lot. So if I show you the last few runs, valid next Friday, we'll see that there's been a lot of variance in where this trough is placed. You'll see one run, it's way over here. And that relationship to where the hurricane is uh, relative to that upper low will matter a lot. And when you have cut off upper lows, those are relatively less predictable features. And so there could be an array of arrangements of this pattern in seven, eight days, which we already know introduces a lot of uncertainty just because it's eight days from now. Just that fact alone tells us that things could change a little bit. And this is similar to Hurricane Henri in the sense that if we're trying to think about what the worst case outcome could be, it's if the hurricane is more on the eastern edge of this low, the two could pivot around each other and it could hook the storm closer to North America toward the Northwest in the worst possible case. That would take a tremendous coincidence, uh, an unfortunate coincidence in order for that to happen. It's technically not off the table yet, so we'll keep an eye on this in the long range. But for now, again, this is about seven or eight days out. We're talking about it possibly being near Bermuda. And then after that, who knows, really at this point. So not really an imminent concern for the eastern U.S. or Canada at this moment. Here's the European model at 500 millibars showing the same kind of deal the trough digging off the eastern seaboard as the storm moves to the northeast of the leewards and you'll see again cut off low here as we see a highly amplifying ridge over Canada and this upper low kind of backs to the southwest and the hurricane gets caught up in this kind of pattern and it goes farther west of the GFS here on this forecast and again you get the danger of the potential hook that ultimately the storm ends up escaping to the northeast and does not affect anybody and on this forecast stays over the ocean only. But again, if we look at the European depiction of this at day eight, if we look at the run before this, very different with where the trough is, and the run before that, even more different with where the trough and the hurricane is. So we've seen some variability here. There is some uncertainty in the pattern going forward. So we'll keep a wary eye on this. We'll be watching it for at least another week. So plenty of time to keep an eye on how things are going. But for now, the reliable five-day forecast from the National Hurricane Center only extends out toward the Leeward Islands. Right now, kind of showing a trajectory that would miss the islands to the north, and that is the current most likely outcome. We will be watching carefully for any signs that this deviates just slightly to the south and causes impacts to the islands. But for now, looking okay, we'll just track it closely, and folks should have their hurricane plan ready to go just in case the forecast changes. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.